Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Mind of Steel. This is the weekly show that chronicles the life and misadventures of one man. His name is Mark Steele, and he is often referred to as Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. But sometimes to get closer to Mark, we have to understand his friends. We have to understand the people who have informed his worldview. And perhaps there is nobody more special, nobody who has contributed more to the theory that uh, our bodies have been infested with biosensors placed there against our will and controlled by a cartel of evil electronic engineers. Well, nobody more so than Sabrina Wallace. She claims to be a former network engineer, and it's that background in engineering and computer science that helps her reveal these truths. So, in order to help me understand what Sabrina is saying, I've called upon the help of two such evil electronic engineers. And I can certify that both of these people are 100% malicious, so much so that they appear to be denying Sabrina's core premise. Well, take that on board, because I'm going to introduce them to you now. The first is my dear friend Chris. He is an actual bona fide electronic engineer who also dabbles in computing. So here's his resume. Yep. Um, hi, um, I'm Chris. Um, my uh, degree background is chemistry, electronics and astronomy, which naturally means that, of course, I worked in computers. And the second is none other than MC2, who you may know from famous YouTube channels such as MC2. All right. I'm Mike. Uh, I studied electrical engineering and computer science, but I have spent my career doing uh, software engineering. So now we've introduced our experts, MC Toon and Chris. Let's introduce the subject of today's show. Her name is Sabrina Wallace. She is the former network engineer who believes that we have all been infested with body area network based micro controlling body sensors against our wills and that these devices have the potential to enslave us to transmit what we can feel and hear and see back to nefarious database operators who, for some reason, are spying and controlling all of us. So today I'd like to ask my engineering experts, what could Sabrina possibly be meaning in these various fascinating pronouncements? These are international standards. They're not going away. They're radio frequency standards and you can look them up they are international standards for the electrical engineers that work in our world to run computer data through humans for the global information grid architecture. Hey, okay, how are your brains after receiving that info dose? I'd take exception to the running computer data through human bodies. We don't do that and we have no reason to do that. We access data from personal area and worn devices and a worn device could be anything. I mean, it could be you'd swallow a tablet that would investigate the gut and see what your stomach pH is and see if you are prone to helicobacter pylori infections and look for stomach ulcers. Or you could be wearing an insulin pump um, that measures your blood sugar and doses the insulin more accurately that you need it. So, you know, obviously quite a lot of type 1 diabetics have those. But none of these actually route data through you. It's just sending it to or from devices that you are wearing. What's the personal area network? That's your wireless, the same wireless as your telephone, but you call it a cell phone, because it probably is. Yeah, we don't use landlines anymore, do we? No. Okay, so what is this? This is cybersecurity. Then- Cybersecurity is a much broader term than just, uh, uh, you know, your phone. I suppose though, if people were logging into the human body, you'd want some cybersecurity for that, uh, that little arrangement, wouldn't you? That'd be a good idea. Yeah, but, but how would you log into the human body? It doesn't make sense. It, it could be a uh, um, a oxygen sensor or a uh, yeah. blood glucose sensor that could be done through a a, a, a personal area network. Yeah, well, isn't that so, technically a body area network, not a personal area network? I think the IEEE do draw that distinction. Oh, that's true, yes. The 802.15.4 is right here, and the biosensors are in the body permanently. That is a fact. They are not on the body. You do not get a choice. They're already inside of you. Central theory. I, I know you were talking about these body area networks, these 
maybe a medical device like a blood glucose sensor that you might have attached to you or implanted into you. But Sabrina's theory is that the sensors or are already within us and we can't take them out. How was it installed in me? I have no recollection. We <laughs> may come to some kind of realization as to how they got in there. But whatever it is, it's it's an insidious plan concocted by a cabal of sort of, uh, do you know what? I just don't know. This is one of the mysteries of Sabrina. She never explains this. But but it's so secret that we all know about it. You see, that's the problem. It Yeah, it's published. <laughs> yeah. It, as she said, it's available for everyone to see on the internet. The standards are there. I mean... That's, a, that's I how secret that, it is. Yeah. I mean, she's not wrong in that some body area network devices are effectively permanently implanted. The one that I would think of immediately would be um, a cardiac pacemaker. Yes. Yeah, you know, you're not going to get, you're not going to dig into that and take it out. But you know, cardiac pacemakers are, are kind of big because they have batteries that have to last for ten years. You'd know about it if it was put into you. I think maybe what she's thinking is that it's there has been something surreptitiously installed in people, and somehow it's powered in a way that's no well, technology you know, known exists that that could. Uh, power something as small enough for us to not know it was installed. But isn't yeah, this the problem because you with can all of... power things remotely by magnetic fields or radio waves, but you have to have a minimum size of antenna to pick that up. Yeah. Especially if it's buried deep inside the body where there's attenuation of radio waves. Yeah, I think Sabrina's theory is that there are millions or possibly billions of these sensors that have been somehow inserted into the human body, and they're all being powered by, by something. I've certainly never heard her claim that they are powered by radio waves. She may believe that somehow they tap into the human body's own energy. It, does that sound plausible? No. No. <laughs> I've heard people say things like that, but it's not plausible because they'll say, well, you know, the body produces electricity. Didn't you watch The Matrix? Uh, yeah, but that's that's not how things work. You, you can't just yeah. put something in your body and then somehow power a device from it you know you have to supply external power to it by means of a magnetic or electric field or it needs a battery you know Im imagine some kind of miniaturized device that could somehow fuel itself off the the sugars found inside the, the body um i mean you can get energy out of sugars i mean that's how the body does it yes you could in theory tap into that but the molecular engineering the chemistry that you'd need to actually do that successfully would be immense. I mean, the body well, gets energy well, after that as chemical energy. It still hasn't it, turned it into electrical energy. It would imply, wouldn't it, that somehow this chip would have its own digestive system along with some kind of generator. Yeah, and I'll say is if that's been invented, why don't we have power stations where you feed raw sugar cane into it, which, let's face it, is very easy to grow, uh, and we get free, clean power that produces nothing more than the waste products of respiration. For all of you who have loved ones who think they're a targeted individual or who are survivors of satanic ritual abuse, you need to learn about the medical implant communication system and you need to do it today. You owe yourself that. They know what they're doing. They always have. They have specialized systems that are now on every single human, not just the people they tested on in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Or mixes. <laughs> Miska, Mike's. First of all, the the the, um, the debater in me says, "Well, that's an appeal to pity or appeal to emotion. Should should be discarded straight away." The thing that also struck me about that is that is an error of fact. If you look at the frequency, she states on the top, she says two point four terahertz. Yeah, which is way up into the um, infrared bands. It's, I'm sure she means two point four gigahertz, which is the same frequency as microwave ovens. She, she would have to. The two point four terahertz won't won't transmit through skin very well. Well, you get subsumed with the huge amounts that the human body radiates anyway, because it's like yeah. heat energy. Uh, she she must mean two point four gigahertz. Yeah, but she it, has it's to. a glaring error of fact. Two point four gigahertz is an unlicensed band, so it's it's definitely a it's low power. It's the same as microwave ovens, which is why no one uses it because you get noise from microwave ovens. But let's say for a moment, imagine if we did have implantable body devices that communicated on two point four gigahertz. They don't imagine we do have devices that do that. Oh, Bluetooth. Yes, Bluetooth. That, that's the frequency of Bluetooth. It's also the frequency of Wi-Fi um, and Zigbee. But every everybody at a gym that's wearing a heart rate monitor is wearing a probably yeah. two point four gigahertz uh, wireless device. 
Yeah, it's, it's the ISM ban, the Industrial Scientific and Medical ban. That's what it's meant for. Short range, unlicensed, anyone can use L it. Low power. Because smart meters run it. It's, it's used everywhere. It goes back to the same thing that we were wondering about before. She must think that these have been surreptitiously installed in everybody. Unknown, yeah. unknown to them somehow. And now we have human body communication. No tower required. And how did we get there? With the medical implant communication system on the radio frequency band I just showed you. So no tower required. I think she's suggesting that this communication system doesn't need to communicate via okay, a 5G style cell phone tower. Maybe it's a mesh network. Well, I think a mesh is probably fairly accurate. I mean, that's one way I'd go. It sounds like that's what she's proposing. Yeah, because, I mean, if you look at something like um, Amazon Ring and your sensors on the doors, they're Zigbee or Z-Wave, and they're the things that put coin cells in. They're there, like, hey, I've opened or I've shut. But then you've got much bigger batteries in your doorbell cameras, of course, but that one's over Wi-Fi. A battery of the size of a, a, a you know, decent-sized coin in them, and it lasts you know, a year maybe. Yeah, that's about what mine does. So how would somebody have something inside of their body, unbeknownst to them, that's that that's got enough battery to <laughs> to last? You know, a coin cell size battery. When the the size that they have to be, I mean you couldn't make anything smaller than a small button cell if yeah. you wanted to power it. And it's just where would you put them? People are gonna notice lumps and bumps <laughs> under their skin. They really are. <laughs> you have a bi biochemical body part involved in all of this that they took away from everybody. You're not the only one. And here's how they did it. They get to go to work every day on internet information, surveillance, and reconnaissance with the internet of behaviors, bodies, things, and the in internet of industrial things and medical things. That's your body area network. That's why synergists are here on the channel. They're learning about the fact that we took a human body part away from everyone in the whole world 150 years ago. Got a question for you. Okay, can you guess what? what this human body part that Sabrina believes was taken away from you 150 years ago? I have no idea. The only thing I would take away from you is my wisdom teeth, and trust me, I knew about it. Right. I, yeah, wisdom <laughs> teeth is where I went. The other is, yeah. is uh, some, an some ancient skin. No, she's in fact referring to the biofield, which is another word for the aura. It was taken away from us. Apparently, it was taken away by a cabal of maybe an electronic engineers. I'm never entirely sure. Is, is this to do with the satanic ritual abuse she was talking about earlier? How has that linked in? Because she, she brought that up as if it's somehow related to a all statement this. of fact. The, the very first radio waves that we actually discovered in science was Hemholtz waves, and then a gentleman called Hertz, which is why we get frequencies measured in Hertz. And I'd have to look it up, but I recall that as being 1878. And that's about 150 years ago ish, give or take a few years. You know what? That's the best guess I think I've ever heard on this subject. So I'm, I'm... And then a bunch of radio frequency people got busy electrically logging in and out of humans. Yeah. And they used the EEG. You know how the MRI, the EEG, and the ultrasound are supposed to be only in the hospital? Nah, 2007, Georgetown, they left the hospital. They put on a little headset and they watch you think, breathe, and all the rest in real time. So it's almost like remote controlled for a human being hold on, hold on. you log into a an, another person no no she said electrically interface which involves like you know electrodes like a taser or something yeah it needs to be in physical contact the, these types yeah. of things don't work at a distance if, imagine if they did for a minute though how much bandwidth would we need to fully immerse oneself in the experience of another like we could we can quantify something like that we can say well it's audio and video and if all you're doing is audio and video, then, you know, we can we can quantify that. We, we yeah, said she specifically thoughts, said she's but... talking about the thoughts. Now, that implies she's going all the way down to the quantum level. And to actually get the quantum states of every electron in the human brain. Oh, yeah. That, that's just, no. I think it was 2007 she said he left the hospital and they were doing this outside the hospital. I mean, that's an error of fact, because in 1993 and 1994, I was doing this at university. We were building heart rate monitors and e ECG analysis gear that you can actually take out, put in an ambulance, and look at people to see if they're having a heart attack. And that's in every ambulance in probably the Western world by now. But you, but you have to physically attach it to the person. I mean, you can actually look at the areas of the brain that are lit up 
or certain emotions by using PET. Yeah, but they have to uh, they have to consume something for that to work. Yes, yes, you need a radioactive tracer for it, which is why they don't do it very often because it is actually technically a bit bad and, for you. And, and an MRI for for reference needs somewhat close proximity and incredibly strong magnets. Very heavy magnets and lots of liquid helium. Was anyone ever MRI scanned without their knowledge? I Only was because people. I passed out, <laughs> but, but I'm fairly certain everyone else knew what was going on. Well, that sounds nuttier than fruitcake, right? That's what I thought. I, so I went to work uh, because I used to be a network engineer. So I'm like, if you're really like using computer networking through the human body, I'm going to hunt you down because I went to work. I, this was my job as a professional. So this is easy for me. But what a I, network well, engineer. Oh my wow. goodness. The, I believe Sabrina has been at some stages of her life a Cisco certified network engineer and has completed the module on uh, Cisco security protocols. Not Amazing. with that book, she hasn't. That was a CCNA book. So CCNA, I believe that is Cisco Certified Network Administrator. No, that's Cisco Certified Network Associate. Oh, that's the okay. very bottom of the skills. That's a fairly easy to pass exam that will be the first one that anyone will do who is interested in Cisco networking. After that, you have CCNP, which is Cisco Certified Network Professional, which is the one I did. And then you have CCIE, which is Cisco Certified Internetwork Engineer. Uh, and that's the exam that costs you many thousands of pounds, makes you sweat buckets, and takes an entire day to do. And that's a pass rate of about 10%. Sabrina refers to herself as a former network engineer. Are you suggesting that she may not even have made the grade of engineer? I'm fairly certain she hasn't, because she'd be shouting about it and she would have a CCIE book and the appropriate network paraphernalia, like the cap that you get at the end of it, and the lanyard and the badge. I'm not wanting to disparage her, but there are a lot of people who pass the CCNA. It's not a difficult exam to pass. Even I could pass it, maybe. I'm fairly certain you could pass it without trying too hard. I'm looking at her, her resume. Um, none of her resume suggests that she has any sort of a, a high-level um, networking no. background. Security. Then whoever drug you over here is going to tell you, yes, yeah, she used to hold a really high profile job working the back end of Northcom. Then she worked at the University of Wisconsin Whitewater as an internet services technical professional. She knows a lot about software, but more than that, she knows how radio frequency works in the body. So I've, we've got the enlargement of the... <laughs> she she managed dial-up uh, Cisco network gear for, for dial-up. Yeah. Um, that, that's not that's not high level that that's the thing that the entry level grunt has to do so that the the guys that have been there a while can do something else well we have a term for people like this and they're called cable monkeys because they spend a lot of time patching cables around yeah so uh, it's how you learn the ropes and then from there you graduate but there's nothing on that cv that says she's graduated from doing that it, it does actually say that she has installed cable though i think so so is my electrician in my house but that doesn't mean that he's and, certified in radio but, frequency engineering. Okay, so, so, but then she says she knows a lot about software. Um, but there's nothing that would suggest no. from her resume that she knows a lot about software. She says things like she worked with What's Up Gold 8.0, which is... I mean, is there a Python, Java, C++, anything listed on that? No, she has I, no software I, development in there. I, I can't see any mention of any programming system or even sort of um, infrastructure as code type networking systems. I also checked on GitHub under her uh, her current name, Sabrina Wallace, and under her maiden name, which if you look on that CV, you'll see. And I don't see any history of being a, a software or a computing person at all. It um, does It does sound like it. Yeah. She says, you know, develop multiple maps and network concepts within What's Up Gold. That's not impressive. Well, no, a network map is it, it goes out and it finds the network and maps it for you. Yeah. And that's what it does. It's a network discovery tool using NDMP. That was the build up to her final thing to say that she knows a lot about wireless. And nowhere on her resume does it talk about wireless. But even if she was an excellent program, that doesn't mean you know anything about wireless radio engineering. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the two disciplines are so, I mean, one's a theory of computing, the other is physics. They're, they're totally separate. Have that. We have a bunch of radio frequency and electrical engineers who are now your new doctors. And if you don't know that, if you're unaware of that, that you have electroceuticals and wireless drugging already happening, that's the second of a two-part college textbook series that we read here on the channel fairly often because they started electrically drugging our senior citizens, pardon my face, 
in, in hospitals, electrical drugging is an electrically monitored drug delivery system. So rather than the doctor coming around every eight to 10 hours and giving you your morphine or whatever, it's dispensed into your drip automatically over that period of time. So you don't have the, the big hit and then the sort of slow crash down and so forth, which can lead to addiction. Well, I, I think she's she's suggesting that somehow, again, these devices that nobody knows about have been implanted in people and then they are drugged by these devices that they don't know that are in them somehow injecting enough you know we, we've we're unaware that they're in us but there's enough of the drug in them that they're that they can drug us implantable drugs are a thing though because that's not a new thing i mean in terms of brain surgery for tumor removal and so forth you will pack the cavity with quite powerful chemotherapy drugs yeah and you get stents in the heart that you know force the heart vessels open so you know you don't get coronary obstruction and they have a drug delivery on there to make sure they're not rejected to reduce inflammation but these aren't new things and again but they're not electronic implanted. no they're not they're the tantali passive but that's about the only thing i can see of about the only electrically powered implanted device i can think of that actually delivers drugs is an insulin pump and you know they're about the size of a hockey puck. And and you, how often do you have to replace the insulin? Right, you, 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 it's not unlimited. I seem to recall it's fourteen days. But the only thing that's implanted is the end of the needle. I mean, the entire thing sits outside you, and it's like stuck on with a really powerful plaster. So, how is something that is able to deliver drugs electronically inside people, un you know, unaware, and somehow? No. updated often enough to continue to deliver the drugs. The, the, the only other thing I could think of that you could possibly have got mixed up with is if you are having um, drugs delivered to a specific area of the heart and they do it with oh uh, the, the, the angiogram, so you end up with the the wire inserted into the little vein of the leg and they push but, it over but to that's the heart, not what she's getting there at. and release it. I mean, that's an implanted drug delivery that's done electronically, but again, that's it's not, not wireless getting. and it it's not what she means, but it, could she be confused by that? The DigiID has been installed since 2009. Those biosensors have been commercially available to anybody who could install a light switch for Zigbee and Bluetooth since 2005. And nobody had the balls or the decency to tell you? Bullshit. Well, there you go. The biosensors have been commercially available for a considerable number of years. And, and nobody told you. But we've just been told about them and we all know about them from these publicly available committee meetings that are published on the internet. Yeah, amazing. That tell everyone about them. Zigbee and, and uh, Bluetooth, right? Well, people know about Bluetooth. Zigbee is, is less commonly known about, but in in oh. in certain verticals, it's well known. But I mean, Bluetooth has been long since 2009. And I, I had it in 1999. I had a Bluetooth headset on my phone. Yeah. If there were implantable biosensors and they used a protocol that was commercially available for a number of years, then wouldn't that imply that they were very easy to detect. You, what, what kind of equipment would you need in order to detect the presence of these hypothetical biosensors that have been implanted in us? Well, I'd have a really high-powered, high-tech, compact microprocessing system that's called a mobile phone. Because it has Bluetooth, it has Wi-Fi, it has near-field comms. I mean, you know, there's not many people have those, though. Oh, hang on, wait a second. Yeah, I, I, uh, um, everybody has a Bluetooth a detector on their phone uh zigbee is less common uh but the yeah, fact that, find that the fact that things are commercially available does not imply that they have been installed in you no but it would be even more extraordinary if these devices are installed in us they could do what sabrina claims they could do and yet for some reason they have remained completely undetectable you, you could have devices that are produced en masse by the millions but they're detectable and you know it's called microchipping for animals and it's about the size of a grain of rice but that's state of the art you don't get any smaller than that and you'd still know about it being installed i mean it's it's a big needle it's the size of a biro it's yeah and, and, and you can feel it under your skin yeah it, it's a little lump i mean and if you put it in too deep it can't be read because the radio waves can't get to it to power it and it. <laughs> there's there's the trade-off it, it gets to the physical yeah. limitations the the laws of physics yeah. you you can only build an antenna so so small for a particular frequency you can only transmit power um using 
you know, transmit a radio frequency with a certain amount of power requires a certain physical size, both to the antenna and the amplifier and the power source. The, the, the size is dependent on the frequency. All of these things are interrelated and not cheatable. There's no... And well known. Yeah, Everyone and, and it's them. not like, oh, they're using tech that's of advanced. No, there is no opportunity to advance the tech to have a 2.4 gigahertz transmitter inside the body that's super, super small and can be read from a long distance. I mean, there's you there's no battery for that. Screaming. How? Oh, it's so impossible. They would tell us. And they said, nope. They didn't tell you shit. Because you think looking glass is something other than radio frequency through the human body, radio modulation for neural modulation. The body itself is the IEEE 802.15.6. The biosensors are 802.15.4 and the wireless sensor networks for individual organs or nano peer-to-peer, -peer, brain to brain, etc., is 802.15.5. Sorry, was that nano peer-to-peer to brain to brain, she said? Oh my god. Nano peer-to-peer, -peer, brain to brain. We're, we're part of a brain human network. I, 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 she's just provided you with a technical explanation for why telepathy is possible. No, she's not providing me with anything apart from a headache. So it uh, it went from oh from these devices to now each individual organ has some yes. sort of. The so it's not a device; work. it's the actual organ now. I've well, I, I've I looked think... at those specifications. None of them, none of them talk about how it's communicating with your spleen. Sabrina believes that there are so many millions of these tiny devices in our bodies, and each of these somehow is is communicating telemetry about literally every single breath, every burp and fart is being transmitted to a database somewhere. Why? And secondly, how do you get that information down the bandwidth of a Bluetooth or a ZB device, which let's face it, is not that high bandwidth. It's, it's not even oh. that because it's inside your body. There's no opportunity for, for that much bandwidth because it can't have that much power. Hang on, hang on. We're thinking about this wrong way. Maybe you poop it out and there's a sewer network that pick it up. Maybe what? Well, you know, you can have a strainer in the sort of like lavatory pan to collect all the sort of packets that it downloads. And then there's a network of fiber optics which will run through the sewers that go back to Google. Wait, are, are you saying absorbers? that each time I literally take a dump, I'm I'm making some kind of information dump and, and that it's... concentrated biometric information has been encoded in the the human feces that pops out of my anus and into the sewer. It's a literal download. No, 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 no. It, it's it, it's power downloading the brown way when you're on, interfacing with the porcelain peripheral. Let, let's be polite about this. It's no less plausible than anything else we've heard today. I, I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> well, hang on, hang on. Was, was Thomas Crapper 150 years ago? Maybe that's the aura that got removed. Maybe we're looking at the wrong end of the body. <laughs> Now we have metamaterials in the 6G low pan with the terahertz. That means that if you don't know that this is a body part, you will definitely be electrocuted into submission by soft kill weaponry because the smart grid is weaponry. Now, <laughs> Did you see... She's talked um, to Mark Steele, hasn't she? I do not think she's spoken to Mark Steele. I think Mark Steele has been watching her videos. Oh, but... my goodness. Okay, that is... It, it... It, 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 I'm fairly certain I recognize all my body parts. I I, I touch and interface with most of them fairly regularly. They're going to electrocute you, if you, if you if you don't. If, they're going to get electrocuted by the things that are inside of you that have no batteries if you don't do the right thing somehow. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, if I was missing toes or fingers or noses or, or other um, uh, appendages, I think I'd know. Metamaterials. But, but the this, the metamaterials are real things, though, aren't they? Well, yes, I mean, metamaterials are. I mean, we used to call them things like nylon. That was a metamaterial until it became so common that we couldn't call it fancy names anymore because people were using it as stockings. You know, I mean, the, the, the in-thing metamaterial is one that my lab supervisor involved with, like graphene and buckyballs and stuff like this, and it's just carbon that's been generated by using a bit of sellotape. She's redefined here SMART, S-M-A-R-T, um, as an acronym to mean something else, it looks like. And is that really a swastika sort of fake thing at the end, or is it just really it, badly drawn? I think it 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 <laughs> is a uh, it, it looks like a swastika with a curved ends on it instead of straight yeah. ends. 
Um, I mean, let's give the benefit she's... of the doubt to things. Let, let's say she's she's not actually being deliberately anti-Semitic, but it's yeah, rather yeah. disturbing. But it's, all right, so the amid, manipulation of electromagnetic waves, block absorb enhance, hand waves. Block shock shunt shield is a reference to uh, some um, human aura protective protocol uh, that, that Sabrina uses as part of her biofield practice. The but biofield that saying, we don't have anymore. Yeah, that's been taken away 150 years ago. Uh, me... So you've already been cyborged, and what's worse is that with your 802.15.6, which is the body, the 802.15.4, which is the sensors, the 802.15.5, which is their individual networks, and there's no more GPS. It's all satellite from inside of you, an endogenous photonic quantum signal. What do you think an endogenous photonic quantum signal means? Oh I, don't know, I don't know, but I think I need to get one for my girlfriend. Do you think if I repolarized the warp phase field manifold and injected a tachyon beam into the sublight generator, and then we rejigged the beta circuits from the, the transporter matrix, we could engineer a, a backscattering beam of, of sublight bosons in, into the, uh, the forward shield generator? That Make sounds like a good one. idea. But I mean, well, well, you've just took a load of buzzwords there and, and strung them together to make a, okay, a, a facetious point. I think we can admit that. If you it, look at her paper there, she got a little thing where she drew a little circle around the head and then wrote heterodyne next to it because heterodyne is a sexy word that most people are not going to understand what it means. It's buzzwords. Yes. But a heterodyne is basically a radio frequency mixer and it's a technical way of modulating a radio frequency. So the, the correct name for it was the supersonic heterodyne receiver in the 1920s. And they called it supersonic because it sounded super sexy. And it was just like you say, it's marketing buzzwords. But a heterodyne receiver is one that has your main frequency. Say you've got an FM transmitter at 100 and something megs. And you mix it with a frequency at typically 10.7 megs. And that lets you split out the radio frequency and bring it down to a low frequency where it's more easily manipulated in the electronics array. And that's all it does. But she's just stuck it in there going, wow, heterodyne, wow, sexy word. Obviously, something dodgy going on. And it, it's meaningless. It means nothing there whatsoever. That's a really good observation. But I, I think, though, what she's done with that little word is what she's done with her entire imagined cosmology. Mm -hmm. She's she's grabbed hundreds of terms from computing, from network security, from um, biomedical sensor engineering, and, and she's combined them into what seems like this, this bizarre tapestry of mostly unconnected thoughts. It's just gish galloping. That's all it is. Yeah, a creationist called Peng Gish, I think his name was, his debating technique was like throw as much absolute crap as you could at the other person and then use all the time they had to rebut it without getting onto their argument. And that's exactly what she's doing here. She's put out a lot of technical things here that that she clearly has just made up. She's just pulling them out of, <laughs> out of nowhere. And the people that, that are watching this that don't have a background in this will be completely fooled by it. They'll think, oh, wow, she's talking fancy words. It sounds like she knows what she's talking about. If you wonder if she knows what she's talking about, just re rewind the video. She told you that she knows what she's talking about. Therefore, she knows what she's talking about, right? She has a book from Cisco. Yes. And, and Cisco is a fancy name. It's a big company. And she yeah. was certified. So, so definitely you have to believe that she knows what she's talking about. So when she says it's a free range heterodyne uh, photon boson converter, then that's definitely what it is. This is the trust me, I'm a doctor um, routine, isn't it? I mean, none of those, um, those 802.15.45 and 6, none of those are what she says they are, right? That she, she it's kind of, it's kind of in the realm Right. If you if you read the high level thing, yeah, eight oh two fifteen dot five is a mesh networking topology. Okay. Does that mean that they have been installed in you? Because she just said that they've been put into us. We've already been cyborged, she said. We have satellites within, she said. That's how yes, the GPS now works. Yeah. I mean that's nonsensical. It's just it's it's just a word salad. Most people, normal people, when you look at them and say, Hey, your ass is attached to the cloud. 
No, it's not. You're lying. Somebody would have told us. And that's what I've been up against the entire time. Somebody would have told us. No, somebody would have noticed when it was installed. If you're going to install the ass in my cloud, or sorry, no, my, my cloud in the ass. Yes. The, whichever way around. Different. Again, I think I'd re I realized it was happening. Given that this is America, somebody would have presented you with a bill. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't have free health care, do you? Yeah, that's true. Imagine if you were getting injected with some kind of state-of-the-art biosensor. Right? Which of the American privately owned commercially operated health trusts would provide that as a free service. No, nobody the would. would I, I, guess, I guess the thing that always baffles me whenever Mark Steele or Sabrina talks is like, what would be the motive for doing this? Why would anyone actually want to catalogue every single breath, every single pimple on my skin? Like, don't they have something more interesting to catalogue? At least, you know, how I spend my money. I, I get that, but... Why do they want to know what I'm how, breathing? Yeah. How does it get more gold-pressed latinum into their bank account? Unknown. I mean, who's benefiting? Well, well this is like the chemtrails it's... conspiracy. It's like, oh, they're spraying the planet with chemtrails. It's like, they are doing it. Well, if they are doing it, aren't they spraying themselves as well? I mean, if they're doing this to everyone on the planet, aren't they doing it to themselves as well by injecting all these nanobot device things? Well, I, conceivably, you could you could say, well, they, whoever they are, are not actually getting those injected into themselves. And if they are doing it on camera, it's all for fake. It, it seems like an, a very elaborate way of doing things. Yes, because if you really did want to eliminate a big chunk of the population, there is a time-honored and very effective way of doing that, isn't there? It's war. quite a war, war, isn't it? You get a bunch of angry men, you give them guns and meth, and you tell them that there's a certain population within the country that if only they were eliminated, the world would be one step closer to utopia. And nine times out of ten, the messed up men with guns go out and do precisely what they're told to do. Like, we just don't have or see any evidence. They just shout about it, but there's no... I, what evidence could Sabrina show us? Because she claims to be an expert at this. Like, can, can we issue her with a bit of a challenge? Well, uh... You would expect some sort of evidence for this, some sort of device that that could actually do what it, what she says could could do, and somehow could have been installed in people, unbeknownst to them, in in a way that works as she has described. So, what device is this? She says they're commercially available. Are they on Amazon? Can you find them on? wish.com where where are they what are they and how have they been installed in people could you then go to a person and discover this in one of these people that would be great if these Sorry, objects just buy a device and and scam people i mean how difficult can that be and if these devices existed within us surely you know anytime i accidentally cut myself and squeeze out a few drops of blood well should it not be possible to be to find one of these biosensors in a drop of my blood or Sabrina does say that she's a network engineer and a network engineer of her caliber certainly could hack into the system and actually show us how they, whoever they are, actually interface to the system and just show us that protocol. She could, at the very least, tell us what item of information we would need in order to connect to these devices and, and what specific protocols they use, and we would be able to I don't get a, a little scanner or um, a spectrum analyzer, and we ought to be able to see a signal from these devices if they produce a signal. A spectrum analyzer would do it, broadband spectrum analyzer. She's declared that it's 802.15.6. You know, it's almost like we can yeah. download the standards and see what it, it's going to sell us. It's a specification. Devices are commercially available for it. Certainly, she could get one of these commercially available devices and show us uh, just do us a, a scan and to show the the everybody that's got them, obviously, that she says has them, uh, you know, transmitting the, these signals. A challenge has been issued, but will it be accepted by either Sabrina or one of her multitude of fans and admirers? We want to see this device. If our bodies have been riddled with biosensors, then produce one. Why are they so hard to find? Why has nobody ever revealed what one of these biosensors look like? If these biosensors are transmitting and receiving signals via some kind of 
standard RFC IEEE specified protocol. Well, we ought to be able to intercept that signal. Why not get some kind of basic spectrum analyzer and demonstrate that these signals actually exist? Why haven't you done that, Sabrina? And what about some of the questions that Chris and MC Toon asked, such as, how did these objects get into our bodies, if you believe they're really there? And how are they powered? So many of these questions have been left unanswered, which is strange considering that Sabrina publishes tens of hours of videos every week. Why is it that these most fundamental questions go unanswered? Why is it that Sabrina is keen to dig up some patents or papers from maybe years ago, but never actually produces any direct evidence? Well, the obvious answer is because Sabrina is talking utter nonsense. But let's just enter into her world for a few seconds. Let's fantasize with her. If there's a shred of truth in what Sabrina is saying, she should be able to provide evidence. The one thing that she has never, ever done. Anyway, it's been an absolute blast. My thanks to Chris and Mike for sharing their wisdom with me. My thanks as ever to Sabrina and Mark Steele, without whom this series could never have been possible. And I would love to see you all in a week's time for another episode of Mind of Steel.